An airliner and a Black Hawk military helicopter crashed in the United States last night. Both vehicles ended up in the Potomac River in Virginia, and at this time it appears that none of the 67 people involved survived. This is a tragic accident and, in addition to expressing our closeness to the victims and their families, today Mary and I will tell you the possible causes of what happened. Also using new 3D reconstructions. The first thing to know is that the accident took place near Washington National Airport, Ronald Reagan. It's one of the main airports in Virginia and is located along the Potomac River, just five miles from the capital, Washington. Here at 8.48 p.m. local time, the tragic accident took place. The first aircraft involved is a Canadair CRJ-701ER. It's an aircraft with a maximum capacity of 70 seats. It's about 32 in long. It has a wingspan of just over 23 meters and a cruising speed of 918 kilometers per hour. This commercial flight, operated by PSA Airlines, was coming from Wichita, Kansas, and had four crew members and 60 passengers on board, including several athletes from the US. Figure Skating, which is the National Figure Skating Association, at the time of the accident, the plane was at an altitude of about 300 feet and was approaching runway 33 of the airport. The second aircraft involved is a military H-60 helicopter from the Sikorsky Aircraft Corporation, also known as the Black Hawk. It's a vehicle that's 5.13 meters tall, with a length just under 20 meters. According to some anonymous sources confirmed by the Washington Post, it seems the aircraft was flying southbound for a training session, and there were three service members on board. For reasons still unclear, the two aircraft collided violently. The plane was traveling at 200 kilometers per hour, while the helicopter was going at about 130. After this violent collision, the two aircraft plunged into the cold waters of the Potomac River. The helicopter was found flipped over, while the plane reportedly broke into two pieces. According to the initial statements from the authorities, none of the people involved survived, although the investigations are still ongoing. It's clearly visible from the trajectory of the police helicopter N.22PP, which is constantly flying over the area. Now the airport is closed, as mandated by the Federal Aviation Administration, and flights have been redirected to Baltimore Washington International Airport. About 35 miles away, that was the report, but what could be the possible causes of this accident? First of all, it must be said that at the moment we cannot know exactly what happened. We are waiting for the official investigations. However, there are some fundamental considerations we can make about air traffic procedures, which is highly regulated and can help us understand what went wrong and what caused the accident. First of all, this was not a problem related to the weather. As confirmed by the airport itself, the bulletin predicted clear skies, visibility of 16 kilometers, light winds, and a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. And so no weather-related problems. What we can say is that in general, regardless of the weather, the approach phase, that is, landing or takeoff at Ronald Reagan Washington Airport is particularly delicate for two reasons. The first is the location and structure of the airport, which is located close to the city. So to land it is necessary to follow a precise trajectory. But above all, the runways of this airport are very short. Keep in mind that the one where the plane in question was landing measures 1.74 kilometers. Apart from these general observations, which help us understand the complexity of the maneuvers, for those approaching this airport, it is important to consider that the impact between the two aircraft occurred close to the runway, at a height of 91 meters and 1.2 kilometers away from the runway. It therefore happened within an airport traffic zone. This is a very sensitive area because it is highly trafficked. In fact, all flights arriving or departing from that airport converge there. For this reason, Every plane or helicopter entering the ADZ at Washington Airport must be authorized and coordinated in its movements within the area. So what was it doing there? 
Let us keep in mind that, in general, the division of airspace and the management of global air traffic follow precise and uniform rules. Then, consistent with these directives, each state has its own internal organization. So it is not strange to think that a military helicopter was inside an ATZ. It must be said, however, that the collision occurred a very short distance from the runway. And right on the designated landing route, an area that should always be left clear. Another thing to keep in mind is that the ATZ at Reagan Washington Airport is a Class B, which means that anyone passing through this zone must be cleared by air traffic control. However, unlike Class A, which is the most restrictive for ATZs, Class B flights can be used for both IFR flights, i.e. flights in which the pilots operate using the technological instruments available. They have a pre-established flight plan and are in constant communication with air traffic control. And this is the case of the airliner involved in the accident. Both VFR flights that fly, that is, by sight, therefore without the support of instruments. These are always small flights that clearly have specific traffic rules. They must maintain a certain altitude and have a certain visibility and they're always in contact with air traffic control anyway, but they don't have a predetermined flight plan. What we don't know at this time is whether the Black Hawk helicopter was flying under IFR or VFR. We know that shortly before the impact, audio was captured recording the interaction of air traffic controllers with a helicopter designated PAT-25. About 20 seconds before impact, the controller is heard asking PAT-25. If it saw the commercial plane, it gave a command to the helicopter, telling it to go behind the plane. Let's keep in mind that large aircraft are much more difficult to maneuver. The smaller aircraft is then asked to correct its course to avoid impact. At the control tower command, however, no response is heard from the helicopter. And a few seconds later, the two aircraft collide and noises can be heard in the control tower. We're missing some information. It's clear, but what we've just seen already gives us a first impression of what happened. The helicopter was in a complex and delicate area, right on the landing path of a commercial airliner. And it didn't respond to the control tower's instructions. What we don't know, and the investigation will tell, is why that helicopter was there. So whether it was an oversight or there was a specific reason, and whether the communication error was on the helicopter's part or if there was negligence from the airport's control tower in giving instructions. All right, folks, thanks for sticking with us up to this point. I hope this video helped you understand better what happened. Will I see you next time? Right here on Geopop Everyday Science.